Oh, if it isn't my friend Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy. Yes. Oh, hello there. That's uh, Dr. Jimmy at your service. Can you even see me in the dark here? It's a bit difficult, I think. That's because my lamp has gone out. The one that I usually use when I make my lovely videos. Hello, Lenny. There she goes. There's the... Yes, you silly girl. It has gone out. I may need to spotlight a few things. Is that Lenny lurking in the shadows over... Can't really see her because she's not in view. Oh, this doesn't make anything better, does it? Oh, uh, never mind. Uh, there was a beautiful lamp up in front of me that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't sometimes it just sort of sputters out it seems to it seems to have some sort of fault in the wiring or something let me give it a try mm. maybe it'll stay on long enough for this video well it's on for a moment and i don't know if you can see see it's it's like lighting at horror nights sometimes. It, it's like lightning flashing, a bit spooky. Then it stops altogether and I don't... Oh, there it goes again. See what I mean? I don't know if it's safe to allow it to keep doing that. For all you know, it might, you know, cause a fire or something. Ooh, is it staying up? No, it's not. I'm thinking maybe there's something wrong with the lamp. And so I have to have it replaced at some point. Unfortunately, I don't have any lighting at the moment. <laughs> I'll just make sure it's turned off so it doesn't present a fire hazard. And I shall sit here and do my best in the gloomy shadows as best as I can. And at some point, before I make my next video, I'll get that lamp out of here and put in something that works a lot better. All right. I hope you can see it's so terribly dark. Oh, maybe I should... Tr I don't know. Well, I'll do my best. But I hope you can see what I'm doing. Put my hand close. Yeah, I can, if I get close enough, you can see what I'm doing. All right again. So... There's a lot of videos I need to make. It is August 1st, August 1st, which means <coughs> 2019 in the late afternoon. It means that Halloween Horror Nights begins next month, whether you're in Florida or Hollywood or Japan or Singapore. Horror Nights begins next month in September. Isn't that wonderful to be able to say that? After all these months and waiting, we can say next month is Horror Nights. Yay! <laughs> well, to be very precise, 36 days from today will be the beginning of Halloween Horror Nights 9 in Orlando. 36 days on Friday, September 6th because this is Thursday, August 1st. Wonderful. Oh, I have a lot of videos I need to make for you. There's a lot of information that has come out over the past couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, on Tuesday, we learned all about Universal Studios Japan's Halloween Horror Nights 2019. The day after that, on July 17th, it would be Fifteen days ago, I believe, Wednesday week before last, we learned about two more haunted houses in Orlando and Hollywood. And then, <coughs> last week, Thursday, I think it was, exactly one week ago, we learned about two more haunted houses in Orlando and Hollywood. And then... Most recently, last night, we learned all about what's happening at Halloween Horror Nights 9 at Universal Studios Singapore. So I have all those lovely videos to make for you, as well as, of course, my continuing history of Halloween Horror Nights 25, if I ever get back to that. 
And with all the house reveals, there have now been seven haunted houses revealed in Orlando, and I've only made one house cocktail video. So I'm going to hope at the very least to get the house cocktail videos done. And I'm starting tonight with the second cocktail video for 2019 for the second announced house, Nightingale's Blood. So, what sort of cocktail do I make for Nightingale's Blood Pit? I actually thought a little bit about a beer-based cocktail, because of barley, you see. You wonder, what does barley have to do with anything? Well, the word gladiator comes from an old sort of Roman slang back in the day. It meant someone who is a barley eater. Does that make any sense? As a matter of fact, you always see in the movies these big muscular men, very, very muscular, without a single ounce of body fat. What you don't know is that a lot of those gladiators weren't men at all, but ladies. Uh, both men and women would fight in the arenas. Also, they tended to be huskier in appearance than you would expect. You see, you stab with the knife, with the sword, a short sword, and if you have a lot of body fat, that stops the sword before it gets to your vital organs. Oh, yes. It was actually much, it was like a sort of natural armor. And they ate things like barley to fatten up a bit before they went out and fighting like a Japanese sumo wrestler. They had a lot of bulk or a power lifter. They had a lot of bulk on top of their muscle. Not that they weren't muscular, but they, they were, but they also had a nice layer of fat as extra protection. If you find real pictures of them, uh, they don't look like the, you see in the movies. But, of course, I'm sure the ones in the haunted house aren't going to be look like that. No, they'll probably be the classic body fascism with all the beautiful torsos and much easier on the eye. And, frankly, I don't mind if they're pretty to look at because <laughs> I'm a lech. <laughs> no, not really. But wet gladiators, my goodness. Yes. So... <laughs> So let's get back to this. What could I make then? I was thinking maybe something wine-based, because that's what they probably drank in ancient Rome most of the time. And then I realized what's frequently drunk then and now in Italy isn't so much wine, but what they sometimes call vermouth, which is a fortified wine. It's very popular just to drink it straight out of like a wine bag. In Italy, you see it all the time, especially a really good regional vermouth. And I thought that might be the source of a very excellent cocktail. I started thinking like about Negronis and things here, but that's more Florentine. And then I thought Italian ingredients for the most part. And then I realized what evokes Rome more than an artichoke. You say, huh? No, really. Haven't you heard of Roman artichokes? That's very, very much a vegetable associated with the Eternal City, especially with the Jewish quarter. And an awful lot of those people got thrown into the pit to the gladiators to be killed. Because a lot of the earliest Christians were primarily Jews. You know, think about it. That makes sense. St. Peter was killed in Rome. He was, he was Jewish. Jesus was Jewish. Think about it. Uh, and artichokes, especially in what they call Trastevere, or across the Tiber, yeah, that's where you have these beautiful roasted artichokes. You can get them to this very day in certain areas of Rome. It's wonderful stuff. And it reminded me of a particular uh, Amaro. You know, people, uh, of course, everyone likes, uh, they use those for those uh, Aperol, uh, what do they call them? Uh, those with, they mix it with some sort of seltzer water. What do they call that? It's very, very popular. Spritz, you know, with an Amaro spritz of some sort. That's a very popular drink nowadays. And, of course, everyone knows about Cinzano. And, of 
course everyone knows about uh, oh, what's it called? Of course, I forget the name of the most common, uh, the m most famous, bright bloody red, and um, and uh, uh, I've used it before because the red color originally came from beetles, Campari, of course, yes, all those sorts of things. But there's one that's unique. Different in flavor, different in color, and different in origin. It's called Chinar. Chinar, which features artichoke as a primary ingredient. It doesn't taste like what you think, though. It's sort of a darkish color, sort of reddish brown, and has sort of a bittersweet flavor. Isn't that perfect for Nightingale's Blood Pit? So that's going to be my first ingredient. And I shall put some Chinar. I hope you can see in the dark as I pour it here into my silvery shot. Uh, oh dear, was I too low? Anyway, I poured it into this thing, uh, into the lovely thing. And then I pour that into the cocktail shaker and spill it all over myself. I really should remember to bring napkins out here whenever I do this, especially in the dark. I can't tell where it went. Oh, well. And the next ingredient will be a vermouth, but not just any sort. This is one of the better ones. There's a... I don't know if you can see it very easily, but let me take a look. Use this to help me. It's, uh, it's vermouth de Giuseppe Carpano. Yes, uh, Antica Formula Dal 1786. Antica Ricetta Vermouth Pregiato. Specialita Torino. It comes from Turin, but uh, which is kind of to the north. But that's okay. A lot of the gladiators were Germanic people who would have come from that part of Italy. So we'll put some of this in here as well. It's also sort of a brownish, deep brownish, reddish color and like dried blood. Oh, that smells wonderful. And we pour that in here. You can use any good vermouth, but try a good one. It's not just, not just, uh, not just Martini and Rossi or something like that. You get a good, good, one of those better uh, Italian vermouths. If you'll pardon me for a moment, I need to get some napkins, some of the spillage here. Oh, it's just too dark in there. run out of the room and leave you alone with whatever haunted beast might lurk in this chamber of horrors which I call my conservatory. All right, wipe up the spillage there and, and leave these napkins nearby so I can use them. Cat. Yes, I hope that was the cat. Oh, she caught a lizard in here the other day. I was coming in through the back door over, the, over there and and as I opened the door, she ran outside, and I said, Lenny, you're an inside cat. What are you doing? But I saw why she ran outside. She usually doesn't. But there was a lizard just out there on the deck. She ran out, nabbed it, and came right back in. Had its tail off in half a minute. Now, Bob would have had that lizard dead in about two seconds. Lenny, though, the thing is still alive. It's been hours. Because she's a bit more gentle. Or is it more cruel? Depends on your point of view. She wants to keep the lizard alive so she can stalk it and kill, attack it and hunt it again and again and again. Whereas Bob was either more cruel or more merciful, depending on how you look at it, because Bob had it dead immediately and put it out of its misery and then played with its corpse, as you do if you're a cat. But in Lenny's case, oh, it may be days, even weeks, before the lizard finally dies of sheer exhaustion and terror. For the lizard, it's an agony. For Lenny, she's having fun. But that's the circle of life, children. No, sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that's worse than the live-action atrocity. One more ingredient to my cocktail. We've got... I also don't really know the words. This is the... Uh, this is the uh, 
and I would have to lift Lenny up, and that would upset her. This is Pecho Bitters from New Orleans. I'm using them. I was going to use orange bitters, but then I realized the color. Pecho, you can't really tell here um, because of the bad lighting. Let me try this. Then you can see better. Yes, you see the color. More appropriate for blood pit, I think. All right, let's splash those in there. Splash, 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 it is splash. Again, I'm never frightened of bitters. I always use a lot. The people think, oh, dash, just dash. No, 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 never be frightened of it. That's the seasoning for your cocktail. Now I shake the thing like a motherfucker. Shaka, 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 shaka. And while I'm shaking, I'm going to bring something up, which I was going to save for a different video, but I'm going to say it right now. Because before I get to all those updates that I've going back to Tuesday the 16th and Wednesday the 17th and Thursday the 25th and most recently yesterday, which was Wednesday the 31st, I guess. All of those updates and announcements given for Horror Nights in Japan, Hollywood, Orlando and Singapore. Before all of that, we got another piece of information earlier, even earlier, and that was construction permit number 10 for Orlando. And uh, the last time I spoke to you, I talked about the fact that we all pretty much figured it would be soundstage 25A. I'm sorry, 24A. And of course it was. So it is now officially confirmed, 100%, that all 10 haunted houses this year will be, is my hand dirty or is just the way it looks in the, yeah, just the way it looks in the dark. All ten haunted houses this year will be in the very same places where ten haunted houses were located last year. Yes, that would be Soundstage 22, which last year was the site I'm pouring the cocktail into, a sort of a chalice. Isn't that more appropriate for a Roman beverage? Romans had glass, by the way. It was rather expensive, but they did have glass. Oh. And sort of a wine glass. And again, it's hard to tell the color in the dark, so I'm going to do this. See? Perfect coloring for Nightingale's Blood Pit. Lovely reddish-brownish color. And here is the cocktail, then, for Nightingale's Blood Pit. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful. It's a bit strong in flavor, I mean. Mm. Ah, definitely bittersweet. Very bittersweet. I think I'm glad I used the Peixo bitters rather than the, rather than the orange bitters because the orange bitters are even more bitter whereas the Peixot bitters are a little more sweet, so it pushed it a little more toward the other side, because, my goodness, it would almost be too bitter. For some people, it probably would be, but for me, it's perfect. Mm. It reminds me of a lot of things, like a very good, fine cigar, doesn't taste like that at all, but it reminds me of it. I don't know why. <laughs> sort of a, the aftertaste is something. Mm. Mm. Or Cooper's Oxford Marmalade, if you've ever had that. Excellent stuff. It's even mentioned by Ian Fleming in the James Bond novels as the best marmalade from Britain. Oh. Has a, a sort of bittersweetness of that caliber. I'd rather like it. Yes, I think it's perfect for the for the Nightingale's Blood Pit. So, again, to get a better idea, let me show you. Yes, this is the Nightingale's Blood Pit cocktail. Hmm. Lovely. Quite lovely. All right. So, 
All ten haunted houses have been, locations have been confirmed. Now, all ten haunted houses have not yet been confirmed. But we have Soundstage 22, where last year were Stranger Things. This year is rumoured to be the Ghostbusters house, which, by the way, I'll get to in another video. Hopefully in the next couple of days. Um, Soundstage 24, A and B. Last year, Carnival Graveyard, Rust in Pieces, and uh, what was it? Uh, scary Tales of Deadly Ever After. This year, we have the Yeti, Terror of the Yukon, in one side and the other, an as yet unannounced haunted house. And I'm not going to say what it's rumored to be. That's according, I should say. That's according to the rumors. It's never, it has not yet been officially confirmed what haunted house is in what location this year. But people have, who think they know, have been saying where they think the houses are. Now, I cannot speak to these rumors, but I will not reveal the rumored houses that you probably already know about from the rumors, but. I don't know if they're happening yet until the actual truth comes out, because after all, that Yeti isn't in the Appalachians, is he? Therefore, it isn't always what people think. So, this is where people think the houses will be going. All right, Soundstage 25. Last year was Poltergeist. This year, the rumor is Stranger Things. The secondary Shrek Theater last year was Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers. This year, it is rumored to be the location of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I'll get to that one in a couple days, too, I hope. Maybe sooner. And then there are the parade warehouses, or rather the former parade warehouse, Building 79. Last year was, oh dear, everything went black. Oh, there we are. Last year was Trick or Treat. That's the, the computer. It does that. The screensaver turns everything black if I don't do something. Last year was Trick or Treat. This year, that one, I think, is another as yet unconfirmed house, according to the rumors. Then there is the current parade building, Building 108, which last year housed Seeds of Extinction. And according to the rumors, that's where you'll find Universal Monsters this year. Then the Three Tents, the World Expo warehouses, Sprung Tent 1 and Sprung Tent 2, well, last year we had Dead Exposure, Patient Zero, and Slaughter Cinema. According to the rumors, will be where you find two original houses this year. Nightingale's Blood Pit, of course. And Depths of Fear. And wait till you see the cocktail for that one, kids. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to find the ingredient I want. I looked for it today, and they don't carry it at Publix anymore. I'll find it one way or another. Uh, can't let you slip out of my grasp. And, uh, and then, of course, the temporary Clearview tent behind the Fear Factor Auditorium, which is sometimes known as Tent 3. Last year, that was the second Blum House, the one that had Happy Death Day and the first Purge. This year, it is another house that has not yet been announced, according to the rumors. And we just have to wait and see if it is what people think it is or not. Mm hmm. Indeed, like I said, all these house locations are speculative. Uh, they People say they know what they are. I don't know if they know it or not. We'll have to wait and see until we get a guide map, and then we'll know for sure if the where or or somebody official says where the houses are. But we do know what the locations are, just not for sure which house is which, because the 
permits have identified the very same locations. So that's out of the way. I don't have to mess with that in a different video. Ah, so this is my second house cocktail video for Halloween Horror Nights 29. And there have been seven houses announced so far, and the eighth one could be announced at any moment. It's August. August was in everything that hasn't been announced gets announced. Then that could happen at any moment. Hmm. But I know that the next one that was, was announced was Universal Monsters. And so I have to come up with a very good cocktail for Universal Monsters. And I have a good idea for it already. And hopefully I'll be presenting my Universal Monsters cocktail to you the same time tomorrow night, roughly. Maybe you'll have some better lighting by then. Mm. Then I have one for Depths of Fear and that hopefully I'll present on Saturday night. And then on Sunday night, hopefully, I'll do the cocktail video for Yeti Terror of the Yukon. You know, that's going to be bizarre, too. Yes, it will be a terror. And then I hope on Monday night to do one for the haunted house called Ghostbusters. But I have no idea exactly what that I have some vague ideas about it. I haven't quite crystallized it. And as for Killer Clowns from Outer Space, I haven't figured that one out at all. I just made a Killer Clowns cocktail for the Scare Zone a lot more recently than should have been. I have to come up with an entirely different idea for this one. Hmm. It'll take a bit more pondering. I might not get to that as soon as I would like, but I'll try to get as many of these house cocktail videos in in the next few days. And hopefully during the day I might throw in a video or two and talk about the big announcement from Japan, the Ghostbusters announcement, the Killer Clowns announcement, and of course cover the Universal Studios Singapore announcements that happened last night. It's always nice to read about a new icon Unfortunately, they only seem to have them in Singapore lately. <laughs> and maybe I'll get back to my history videos as well. <laughs> oh, another thing that's happened very recently. We have seen in the park, not I haven't, I was in the park just day before yesterday to renew my annual pass. And I walked around Universal Studios. It was so bloody hot I couldn't stay very long. And I went back home, but I didn't see what was seen yesterday. So just the day before I'd been there. So whatever it was, it went up right away overnight, I believe. And those were those green, green posts that go up in Central Park where they attach the lighting fixtures and the speakers for the scare zones. You know, you're not really supposed to see them, but they're there. And that's the first indication of scare zone prep as they get ready to start construction on the scare zones. And after all, the event starts in the first weekend of September. And there's no Rock the Universe to worry about pissing off this time. So we might see some really exciting street construction going up at any moment. In fact, it's the time of year when People go to bed at night and they get up the next morning and go to Universal. Oh, wait, crap, that wasn't there yesterday. That's the sort of thing that starts to happen. And sooner or later, they close down certain venues like the Fear Factor Auditorium and put a big sign saying they're not doing the show for a while because they're rehearsing something. Although I haven't heard yet what it's going to be. We assume Academy of Villains, but it may be something else. It's a very exciting time of year. Mm. I'm all tingly. Of course, I could just be from the alcohol, but yes. So, hopefully we're getting a lot more videos and hopefully better lighting. At any rate, 
Mm. Finished it. Ooh, that was good. Mm. So that's the second cocktail for you. Nightingale's Brad Pitt. Blood, blood pit. And, uh, well, I will now give my usual disclaimer. If you are under 21, don't drink. If you are over 21, drink responsibly. And <clears throat> that's for the benefit of my lawyers. <laughs> And I wish you all a pleasant evening and see you next time. Until then, this is Dr. Jimmy. Pleasant screams. <laughs>